TNTM The Show presents... August Talking Nerdy. With your host, Pablo Gunner. The Ambassador. I'm Marvin Goof, baby. And we are here to talk nerdy to you about all the nerdy stuff, or as much of the nerdy stuff that we could cover as possible for the month of August. So we're going to be covering House of the Dragon Season 2, specifically like finale, you know, but we'll cover like maybe majority of it. And then we're going to do some shout outs, talk about the merch, and uh, talk about what our charity of the month is going to be for September. Ambassador, take it away with House of the Dragon Season 2. House of the Dragon Season 2 had a lot going for it. Had some good uh, mid-season action. Uh, the one thing that did bug me about it as a whole was they led to something big happening, but didn't actually have it happen. So it was just too much of a cliffhanger. I've got a great idea. Uh, uh. Like, probably some of the better part of it was with Damon, because Damon's a control freak, and mm. he likes to be in control, and he manipulates people to be in control, and he's been like that since the first season. Game of the Game of Thrones world is very mystical and has other uh, entities and powers that are in there. Mm -hmm. Some are explained well, some just are kind of there. And there's this witch to blave, and as we all know, to blave means to bluff. Huh? So you're probably playing cards, and he cheated. Liar! 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 Get back, witch! I'm not. I'm your wife! But after what you just said, I'm not even sure I want to be dead anymore! You never had it so good. Pretty much tormenting him most this season, and, and you're really like trying to figure out, okay, what is this girl's purpose? And what I really love is, they never actually show you if anyone else can see her or not. Like, some characters come in, but they never actually interact with her when she's in a scene, so you're wondering, like, can they even see her? Or not. Interesting. It, it, it was probably one of the better parts of the season was just... And so he's trying to, like, do business as usual. I don't care about my wife. I want the kingdom for myself type of thing. Because he married his niece. Mm. It's Targaryen. Yeah. That's what they do, unfortunately. Not mm. even the other houses really approve of it. Except for maybe Lannister later. Hmm. But, like, all the other ones are kind of like, okay, you can keep doing that, but we're not participating. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. what most of the houses are when it comes to, like, <laughs> their, uh... Do their own thing. Yeah, their yeah. married relatives, <laughs> yeah. They're not a big fan of it, but it's just, they believe they have to keep the dragon blood pure, so that's why they do the inbreeding. Mm. And to try to... That's not like the it. real world at all. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it reminds me of uh, Preacher. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you ever watch that. They have the uh, descendant of Jesus Christ, but they had kept, uh, but they didn't want to taint the bloodline. So they had to mm -hmm. keep uh, having kids with his own self. And wow. so he ends up being very... <laughs> crazy oh, goodness. but yeah but house of dragon it, it was it was definitely a solid season oh. i it had its moments i just felt they should have done something more or saved the content for or saved the season finale for the next season if they weren't actually going to do it uh, but the daemon stuff was entertaining and it was good to see him be able to kind of understand more of the big picture. Uh, that And that's what the witch was doing the whole time. But it's crazy. But it was also crazy to see all his manipulation to get his way. Mm -hmm. Which he did quite a bit. And, well, Damon, he's an asshole. <laughs> he doesn't care who he destroys on his way to get what he wants. And 
when he got to Harrendale, one of his closest allies, he ends up betraying the dude at the end. But he ends up doing what he needed to do was unite all the houses there for uh, the black. Because uh, it's the green and the black. The green is the ones that are on the throne right now, and the black are the ones that are in favor of uh, Rhaenyra being on the throne. Okay. Yeah, so I, I'd say it's worth watching, but I can't give it a must-see just because of the way it ended. Yeah, I, I, you know, as much crap as people like to talk about the Acolyte, at least Acolyte knows how to do a season finale right. Uh, so, uh, that's what I have to say about that. And yeah, I, I know the writing is better in House of the Dragon. Like you said, that part with the Tully, where it was Tully that called him out. Yeah. Right? It, it was, like, that was so, that kid, like, you know, because his dad died and then he became the lord of the house and stuff and, and pretty much of the land. And the way that he... Not necessarily manipulated because he followed the code, right? Like, he followed the way that they do things there and then forced him to get in line with that. Yeah, and just to see that character development and growth that, that all that happened, I didn't even notice that she didn't interact with anybody else. But yeah, it was, it was really weird. There was a lot of weird stuff going on with that. Like, and, he kept, like, hallucinating, waking up, and, like, uh, people would... Like, you could tell people knew that something was off, but mm -hmm. they didn't want to say anything because he's the type of person that could, that would kill you if he was in a bad mood, so yeah. you don't want it. Yeah, I just feel like there was a lot of good moments, and, and we talked about this before, which I said, the way that this is designed, the way that they did this season, it would have been better if they broke it into parts. Like, I think it would have been better if it would have, and I think it was the third season, the third episode, where... That one lady dies, which was the only likable character in the show uh, when they had that dragon fight. Like, that would have been a perfect part one, you know, for the season two, like, ender. And then another one, when they did, like, when they started recruiting just all the, um, all the bastards, I guess. I don't know how yeah. else to put it, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or whatever they called the low folk or whatever they call them. They yeah. started recruiting all these people that may have been, that might have some shred of dragon blood in them. And you see, like, that would even that would have been a better place to end it, to go, like, oh, they got their dragons? Done. And then it would have been better to end it there, because that was a pretty epic moment. And then for them to just... The finale was just nothing but build. And it just really did nothing. And, and it would have been probably a better season opener... Yeah, I saw people making jokes going like, yeah, that was a great episode to have before the finale. You know, like, <laughs> pretending that they didn't yeah. know, right? Like, because it's easy to clown on the way that it was done. And I don't know if it's following the books. I've heard it follows the books well, and that's the thing. It's like, well, yeah, that's fine. it sort of follows but the you, books. But you need to do it for TV, right? Like, and that's the thing. Is if, so if you have to break it into parts to make it work better for TV, then do that. Netflix has done that really well, where they go... You know what? This is better broken into parts than it is a, as a whole season or a half. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so I'm just saying that's that's. But it was a solid season overall. So yeah, I would say it's it's worth checking out, but it's not quite a must. It's a tricky see. one to write for that show because basically where they're getting it from is three accounts of three separate maesters, all unreliable sources, mm -hmm. telling the story, and so each version has some nuggets of truth in there but not what really happened here talking to me our grade scale is must see must stream unless it's something that you can buy of course and then uh check it out or worth checking out and then pass so for shout outs we have uh mk wizard she is now at the top of that list every time because she's phenomenal you've seen some of the videos you may or may not have seen some of the videos i've done with her and they're great we have this great conversation back and forth so definitely check out all of her stuff because it's great uh film rage those guys are hilarious they cover movies so if you like if you're a hardcore movie person definitely listen to them because they cover stuff asap and they'll keep you on on the know and then they're hilarious uh pesky gremlins they they do web comics like mk wizard so that check that out uh watch it if you can podcast they're awesome amerame media they're really cool as well. Um, and then uh, for merch. But Yogurt, what is this place? What is it that you do here? Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you.
Open up this door. <laughs> Come, walk this way. Take a look. We put the picture's name on everything. For the new month for September, it's going to be Lord of the Rings. It's mainly going to be focused because everybody loves the books and the movies. So it's mainly going to be focused on that. But we are going to have some Rings of Power merch as well. So keep an eye out for that. It's going to be coming out. And we're going to be uh, leaving our Batman stuff. Maybe come up with some more. I don't know. And, um, mm -hmm. of course, we're sporting our merch now. Here it is right there. <laughs> we have... This, uh, this hat as well. Is a little oh, yeah, the Pokemon thing. hat. Pretty much the Ash Ketchum Tog Nerdy to Me hat. And uh, mm -hmm. our magic, the lovely right? Magic the Gathering shirt. This one's my favorite, actually. MTG. <laughs> the good MTG. The good MTG. Yeah. <laughs> so... An ambassador? Yeah, my Ninja Turtles Talk Nerdy to Me shirt. Yes. And, uh, and I got one, too. Mine's blue tank top right here. And I got the shorts to go with it. Uh, I want the headband and the socks. And so, if you buy any merch from us, uh, it helps us greatly. I mean, we really don't make a lot of money off the merch. But 5% of any profit that we go to, we have a different charity for the month. And so, for the new month, it's going to be AFSP, which is American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. As it is, as it is Suicide Prevention Month. Uh, there's also Hispanic Heritage Month uh, is halfway through the month. That's why I'm not going to do the whole month. But we're going to roll out some merch for that as we have some Azul Beetle and probably some Miles Morales. We'll probably roll that out too. Yeah. you know. And then any other characters that we can think of that we, that we love or we're inspired by and everything like that. That's it, unless you guys have anything else. Look out for a review of the new 5th edition Player's Handbook. Awesome. That's coming out in a few weeks. I'll hopefully turn that out here in a bit. Cool. Talk nerdy to me. Stay nerdy, flat earth. Keep it nerdy, y'all. <laughs>